Hey, how's it going, dirty sulfurs? Today we're gonna to go over what are some symptoms of a dirty or a bad nav sensor. Then I'll show you exactly how you can properly clean it, and then we'll spend some time on the whiteboard and go over how exactly a MAF sensor works as well. All right, so the job of your MAF sensor is to let your car's computer know how much air is entering your engine. And then with that information, your car's computer can regulate the, your fuel injectors, regulating the amount of fuel entering your engine as well. Now, as far as what are some symptoms of a dirty or bad mass airflow sensor, first one, obviously, if you have a check engine light and you have a code regarding your MAF sensor. Besides that, if your uh, engine is running rough, if you're having, if you're experiencing lack of power, or especially if you're experiencing hesitation or uh, your car bogging down when, trying to, when you try to get going from a dead stop. Now, if you don't have a check engine light, but your engine is running rough and you suspect a problem with your mass airflow sensor, a quick tip I can give you is to simply disconnect the connector for your sensor and then if your engine starts running better then you probably narrow down your problem to a, either a dirty or a bad mass airflow sensor. And your MAF sensor is always located between your air filter box and your throttle body. So basically it could either be right here where this air hose starts or on the air hose itself or closer to your throttle body. But it's always in between these two. Now this mass airflow sensor I got here is from a Land Rover Discovery and on this Toyota Camry as you can see there is no mass airflow sensor. That's because on these Toyotas, they use a manifold absolute air pressure sensor, which basically does the same thing. Now, if this car were to have a mass airflow sensor, it would be somewhere here. It would have two clamps similar to these on the sides, and in order to remove it, all you would have to do is to undo these two clamps and get it out of there. Now, another way you can get the sensor out is to simply just remove these two screws on the side, remove the sensor, and then just leave the assembly in place. But in order to remove those screws, you'll need what's called a security torque spit or socket. These are basically a Torx bits with a hole in the middle. See without the hole in the center of these, you can't get them inside these screws to remove them. That's why they're called security Torx sockets. All right, next with your assembly removed, you want to look for your hot wires for your mass airflow sensor. Now, I'll get you guys a close up in a little bit, but you could have one or more of these and this is what I'm talking about. And here's a closer look and those thin wires up there, those, that's your hot wire for your mass airflow sensor. Now again, on your car, you might have one or more of these, so you want to make sure you can locate all of them. Now a lot of times, like in this case, your inlet air temperature sensor, which is inside this little plastic housing here, comes as a part of your mass airflow system assembly, but I'll get into that a little bit later in this video. All right, so what you want to do next is to get yourself some mass airflow sensor cleaner. And it's very important this is what you use. The hot wire inside that sensor is very sensitive to any other cleaning products, and if you don't use this, you could potentially get a hot wire dirty or damaged, and then you'll be back to square one. And just to reiterate, that basically means do not use brake clean, throttle body, or an air intake cleaner, or any other cleaners but the mass airflow sensor cleaner. All right, next we grab our cleaner, and while keeping it a few inches away from that hot wire, we're going to spray about 10 to 15 times uh, at that hot wire. Just make sure the hot wire doesn't come into contact with the straw, your hands, or anything else. All it can come into contact with is the cleaner inside the spray. All right? And again, if you have other hot wires, make sure you spray them as well. Next, we'll just flip this around and spray at the hot wire from this angle as well. But I'm also going to spray inside that uh, inlet air temperature sensor assembly just in case there are other hot wires inside there that I can't see from this angle. All right, next we're gonna let it sit for about 45 minutes to an hour and make sure it's completely dry before we put it back on the car. All right, now while we wait for our MAF sensor to dry, let me quickly explain to you how your MAF sensor works. So basically on a MAF sensor with a hot wire, you got a ground coming from your car's computer, you got a constant voltage, either five to 12 volts, depending on your car's making model, and then you have a signal going from your MAF sensor to your car's computer as well. Now on some makes and models, you also have a sensor ground wire. That's just to get rid of the electrical noise from your MAF sensor so that you can get a clean signal to your car's computer. See on a hot wire sensor, it basically means the hot wire is a positive temperature coefficient resistor, which means as its temperature goes down, its resistance goes down as well. So the way this works is as the temperature of the hot wire goes up and down, its resistance also goes up and down, allowing a varying degree of the voltage passing through it from your constant voltage supply wire to your signal wire. That varying voltage goes to your car's computer and your car's computer uses that voltage to adjust the fuel that's going to your engine. 
Now with the basic multimeter, you could test your MAF sensor for ground signal and voltage to see whether it's uh, doing what it's supposed to, but that's only gonna work on MAF sensor which have a DC voltage output as their signal. Some MAF sensors use a frequency uh, output, and for those you'll need a lab scope, but a lot of the older cars, they do use a DC voltage output. And if you're wondering how to do that, I'll put a link to a video I did uh, recently at the end of this video that you can check out to see how you can use a basic multimeter to test your MAF sensor. But just to go back a little bit, as you can see on this sensor, it has five pins, which means it has five wires going to it. And like we talked about earlier, on some cars, your inlet air temperature sensor is integrated with your mass air flow sensor, and the two extra wires are for that. You got your constant and a signal wire coming out of your inlet air temperature sensor. Now different from your hot wire sensor, your inlet air temperature sensor is a negative temperature coefficient resistor, which basically means as its temperature goes down, its resistance goes up, allowing less voltage to pass. Now as far as why you need an inlet air temperature sensor, it's because uh, your MAF sensor can tell how much air is entering your engine, but it can't tell its density. And since we know that uh, colder air is more dense than warmer air, if you can measure the temperature of the air, then your car's computer can kind of calculate what's the density of the air entering your engine and adjust your fuel injectors properly. Now when you go to put this back on, it's very important to pay attention to this arrow. This arrow basically tells you the direction for the flow of air to your engine. Basically, since this is pointing this way, your air filter box, we need to go behind it. Basically, air goes through your air filter box through here and then from here to your engine. All right, next, before you start your car and test your repair, you need to make sure if you had a check engine light to erase the codes that caused that light from your car's computer. You'll usually need a scanner for this, but there is a way to do it without a scanner. And in fact, I have a video to show you how to do that exactly. I'll put a link to that video, along with the video on how you can test the MAP sensor with the basic multimeter on this side of the screen. There'll also be links in the description box down below for you to check out. And with that said, I hope this video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more like it and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.